రెస్టారెంట్ రాసిట బిర్యానీ అండ్ స్టెప్స్ తునకి హరిమ సుమలోయి Tonight on first at 9 this Wednesday the 8th of February 2023 The long game with the fourth session of the ninth parliament commencing today President Ranil Wickremesinghe affirms that Sri Lanka will be able to come out of its bankruptcy by 2026 if current policy measures continue Against the tide protests carried out across the island against the government tax regime <laughs> Catastrophe Death toll from Turkey Syria earthquake crosses 11,000. Number of deaths feared to rise. From Ada Derana, this is Ada Derana First at Nine with Andrew Bernard, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. A very good evening and welcome to Ada Derana 24's English News. In your top story for tonight, President Ranil Wickremesinghe was adamant today in his belief. that Sri Lanka would be able to successfully come out of bankruptcy by 2026 if the country follows on this path the head of state expressed these comments during the throne speech made as part of the inauguration of the fourth session of the ninth parliament president vikram singer who was vocal about his lack of enthusiasm to turn out to be favorable in the eyes of the general public in with regard to making populist decisions said that people will only understand the rationale of the steps taken now in 3 years when they will be able to earn an income that is 75% higher than what it is earned now in line with the powers assigned to the president through the 1978 constitution president ranil wickremesinghe issued an extraordinary gazette notice concluding the third session of the ninth parliament last month declaring the 8th of february as the starting date of the fourth session as such president ranil wickremesinghe arrived at the parliamentary complex today at around 9:40 am in order to commence the new parliamentary session as the president presided over the house mp's of samagi janabala vegya and jatika janabala vegya boycotted the parliament and the group of mp's who formed the freedom people's alliance also left the chamber members of the tamil national alliance mano ganeshan and cv vigneshwaran were a few people including seen staying in the chamber the president then presented the government's policy statement I believe everyone remembers the situation the country was in when I addressed the opening of the previous session of the parliament. You may recall that the country's situation, you may recall the country's situation when the last budget was presented and also 7 to 8 months ago. However, the situation is different at present. Due to the measures taken, we have been able to successfully reduce the burden gradually. We have been able to safely guide Sri Lanka long way across a challenging course. Introducing new tax policies is a politically unpopular decision. Remember, I am not here to be popular. I want to rebuild this nation from the crisis situation it has fallen. Yes. I am ready to make unpopular decisions for the sake of the nation. People will realize the importance of those decisions in 2 to 3 years. If the pay tax is abolished, the country will lose 100 billion. If the pay tax is abolished, the country will lose 100 billion rupees. If the tax limit is raised to 200,000 rupees, the economy will lose 63 billion rupees. The total amount that will be lost is 163 billion rupees. We are presently not in a position to lose this income. If we continue in this manner we will be able to give an additional allowance to the public servants in the third and fourth quarters of the year and give concessions to the private sector the interest rate can be reduced in another 3 years the present income can be increased by 75% however some groups are trying to disrupt this process our future journey is based on the relationship we have with the IMF apart from this we will have no other way to move forward We have now reached the final stage of negotiations with the International Monetary Fund. India has agreed to debt restructuring and has extended financial assurances. On one hand, the Paris Club and India are continuing discussions. We are in direct discussions with China. 
we are now working towards unifying the approaches of other countries and that of China. The Paris Club announced yesterday that they will extend its support for the agreement with the IMF and debt restructuring. With that announcement, we received the Paris Club endorsement. This decision for us is a great strength and courage. The international support demonstrates that we are on the right path. We have now been able to increase the foreign reserves which had fallen to zero up to 500 million US dollars. However, if we continue according to this plan, we can rise out of the bankruptcy by 2026. As I have been continuously appealing, if all the parties in this parliament join the process to build the country, we would be able to extricate from this crisis even earlier. Continue the path and build the country or destroy the path and ruin the country with slogaring politics. This is the decision before us. Sri Lanka's economy today is severely damaged. Its malaise needs to be immediately diagnosed and treated accordingly. However, people are pointing to the mistakes made by those in charge and are urging them to be punished first. However, I try to cure the malady first, after which we can then take further measures. Considering all the facts, we expect to dissolve. Considering all the facts, we expect to devolve power within a unitary state. We will not take any steps that will lead to the division of the nation. Drafts are being prepared to establish a national land council and a national land policy. We envision bringing new laws regarding the implementation of powers of the provincial councils in the fields of education and health. There will be no change made to the police powers. Let's understand the difference between the state and government. Any citizen has the opportunity to democratically change governments through the elections. However, no one has the right to create anarchy in Sri Lanka. We will not let anyone create a state of anarchy in the country. We will take any steps in this regard. We will take all steps in this regard. We all should stand on the side which supports a nation and not that which is bent to destroy the country. Let's not be prisoners of the past. Let's not be prisoners of the past, but think about the future. Let's unite. If anyone wishes to have a political agenda, let's consider it after we rescue the nation. The parliamentary session was adjourned until tomorrow and the debate on the speech by the head of state today is scheduled to take place tomorrow and the day after. Following the session, all the MPs gathered for a tea party, including the SJB and the TNA. No parliamentarians of the Freedom People's Alliance expressed their objection to the throne speech of President Ranil Vikram Singha, which he made at the ceremonial opening of the fourth session of the ninth parliament today. Accordingly, the members left the parliament today before the beginning of the president's throne speech. Parliamentarians of the Freedom People's Alliance, who participated in the ceremonial opening of the fourth session of the ninth parliament today, boycotted the throne speech of President Ranil Vikram Singha in a mood to express their objection to the government. Meanwhile, opposition leaders Sajid Premadasa warned the government that they, along with the people, will take to the streets if measures are taken to destroy public lives. He made these comments while addressing an election rally held in Kegol. An election campaign rally of the Samagi Janabal Vegia was held in Kegol yesterday under the patronage of its leader and opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. 
ඇත්තම කතාව ඔය රාජාසන කතාවෙන් හදන්නේ මේ රටේ ජනතාවගේ කරපිට තව පීඩනයක් එකතු කරන්න මම කියන්න කැමති ජනාධිපතිවරයා ප්‍රමුඛ ආණ්ඩුවට සූදානම් වෙන්න එපා ජනතාවගේ ජන ජීවිත විනාශ කරන්න මේ මහා ජන ගංගාවත් එක්ක ළඟදිම මුළු රටම කොළඹට එන දවස අතලඟයි කියන එක මම මේ අවස්ථාවේ ප්‍රකාශ කරනවා Now the death toll from the massive earthquakes that shook Turkey and Syria surpassed over 11,000, which includes 8,500 from Turkey. The Turkish authorities are of the view that the toll might rise further. Now, in the meantime, Sri Lankan ambassador in Ankara, Hasan Tedi Sanayake, said the embassy is taking efforts to locate the 16th person who is said to have resided in the earthquake hit area. Myanmar President Ranil Wickremesinghe, during a telephone conversation with the Turkish president, has extended his support for the people of Turkey and offered to render assistance to the country. Despite freezing weather conditions, rescue operations to save the people under the debris of the earthquake hit areas of southeast Turkey and north Syria are continuing. Rescue teams uncovered more dead bodies throughout the day, giving a further rise to the number of fatalities. According to Turkey's Disaster Management Authority, the death toll is over 11,200, which includes over 8,500 from Turkey and 2,600 from Syria. Aid agencies and emergency workers see the death toll is likely to increase further. UNICEF senior emergency advisor for the whole of Syria, Melinda Young, said getting aid into the country's north is very difficult at the moment. Young says that many roads are damaged, especially at the main border crossing. making it more difficult to get aid supplies sent across from Turkey to organizations working in Syria. Meanwhile, Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan traveled to the area worst hit by the quake in Turkey. He also visited Kara Manmaraz, the quake epicenter, and is also expected to visit other earthquake hit areas in southeast Turkey. Foreign media reported that many people have expressed anger at the government's apparent lack of action, with some people claiming that help is yet to reach them. Meanwhile, on the Sri Lankans living in the earthquake affected areas of southeast Turkey, Sri Lankan ambassador in Ankara, Asanti Orgonavatta de Sanayake said the embassy is taking efforts to locate the 16th person who remains missing. However, last evening Sri Lankan ambassador designated to Beirut and accredited to Syria Kapila Jayavir confirmed that there was no reports of Sri Lankans in affected areas of Syria. In the meantime, President Ranil Vikram Singh has spoke to his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan last evening and has expressed solidarity with the people of Turkey. According to the president's media division, President Vikram Singh during a telephone conversation has extended his support for the people of Turkey and offered to render assistance. He has also assured that the people of Sri Lanka will stand with the people of Turkey to help them during this disaster situation. In other developments, Despite a war in Ukraine, a team of Ukrainian emergency workers left for Turkey to take part in the earthquake rescue and cleanup operations over there. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the Ukrainian specialist poses relevant experience in dealing with natural disasters. According to the National Police Chief of Ukraine, the team consists of almost 90 rescue workers and includes 10 search and rescue dogs trained to find missing people. And we'll be back with your business segment right after this short commercial break. Usas pelata pasu qualify bemu ihalata yamu jaya aragamu jaya aragamu promotion nikata ilanga daagattot ट्रीट अगेंट Meanwhile a 24 hour token strike launched by doctors in prominent hospitals across the country have left stranded many patients that went to these areas in search of treatment and medication A 24 hour token strike which began today at 8 am at the Colombo National Hospital and other major hospitals across the country is expected to end at 8 am tomorrow The token strike is being carried out in protest against the tax regimes of the government and the shortages of medicine in the country This however inconvenienced many patients who had traveled long distances in order to receive treatment and the medication at various hospitals. Yeah. 
In the meantime, the employees of the Ceylon Electricity Board protested outside of the CB head office against what they termed as the unfair tax regime of the government. Apart from the employees required to carry out mandatory tasks, all other employees had reported sick leave in order to participate in the strike. Similarly, employees of the banking sector too had expressed their support towards the protest and engaged in trade union action today. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lecturers of various state universities engaged in a token strike today as an expression of support towards the protests that were carried out across the country. The employees of many other state institutions too took to the streets and protested. In other developments, the employees of the CPC, Port Authority, Electricity and Water Board engaged in a protest in front of the Fort Railway Station this afternoon. However, the Ford Magistrate today rejected a request made by the Ford Police Station to prevent these agitators from entering several roads in the Ford Police Domain. In such a backdrop, the police officers came to the place and informed that they had received complaints that there have been public oppression due to the protest. The group, however, engaged in protests for about an hour and left the place peacefully. A group of trade unions, had also organized a rally at Hyde Park Square in Colombo this afternoon with the aim of withdrawing with the aim of calling on the government to withdraw the oppressive tax amendment. The High Commission of Sri Lanka and India, Milinda Moragoda, discusses on the potential opportunities for Indian companies to establish joint ventures and bring in investments for establishing pharmaceutical manufacturing facilities in designated zones in Sri Lanka with Indian Minister of Health Dr. Mangsak Mandavia. The discussion between the Sri Lankan envoy and the Indian Health Minister took place in New Delhi today. Discussions focused on a range of issues pertaining to the health sector, including the ways and means through which the existing cooperation between Sri Lanka and India in the health sector could be broadened and deepened. The issues discussed including obtained assistance in expediting the process for Sri Lankan importers procuring medicines from India, effective and efficient utilization of the existing Indian line of credit to purchase essential medicines and a potential government to government mechanism to procure medicines from India. High Commissioner Moragoda also requested the Indian Health Minister to explore the possibility of providing postdoctoral training opportunities for Sri Lankan medical professionals in Indian medical institutions. The Minister of Ports and Shipping, Nimal Siripala de Silva, says that the government has prioritized the ports and shipping development despite the economic challenges the country is facing. He made these comments during the event to welcome the first vessel to Sri Lanka under the initiative launched to attract shipping lines to Sri Lanka. Speaking further, the minister called on the port employees to work effectively in order to attract shipping lines to the fort. Ministry of Ports and Shipping, with the assistance of Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Colombo International Container Terminal, South Asia Gateway Terminal, Ceylon Association of Shipping Gates, Ceylon Association of Shipping Agents, Lanka Association of Ship Owners recently launched an initiative to attract shipping lines to the Colombo port as a revenue generation solution for the current economic crisis. Under the initiative, the first vessel, MSC America, belonging to the Mediterranean Shipping Company, docked at the Colombo port yesterday with 1,500 containers on board. The vessel upon arrival was welcomed by Minister of Ports Nimal Siripala de Silva and Ports Authority Chairman Keith Bernard. According to the Ministry of Ports, MSC America is expected to dock at the Colombo port every week with 2,000 containers during every journey. Despite our economic recession and other economic problems, we have given 
the highest priority to the shipping development. Maritime development is concerned, I think, this government and I have given the highest priority. But the minister and the government alone and the shipping lines can't attract the ships here. The main trust lies with the workers of the port. So they must make this port a viable port, a port which has the confidence of the shipping lines in order to ensure the uninterrupted, undisturbed service has to be rendered. There were certain instances the shipping lines were going away from our port and now they have been attracted into our, in, to our port. So therefore we must retain that position with us so that that would bring a lot of income to our country and make this port also a very viable institution, a profit-making institution. The Sri Lankan shares ended high today, helped by gains in financial stocks. The All Share Price Index rose 0.13% to 8,987.45. However, the S&P SL20 fell 2.36% to end at 2,782.56. The trading volume on the All Share Price Index fell to 43.2 million shares from 56.2 million in the previous session. The market turnover, meanwhile, fell to 1.19 billion Sri Lankan rupees from 2.22 billion rupees on Monday. LOLC Holdings and Sri Lanka Telecom were the biggest boost to the index, up 3.6% and 2.6% respectively. Capital goods sector was the top contributor to the market turnover, while the material sector was the second highest contributor. Foreign investors were net buyers in the equity market, purchasing stocks were 308 million rupees while domestic investors were net sellers, offloading 1.17 billion rupees worth of shares. Now let's take a look at how the rupee fared against other major currencies in the world. And that's all the news we have for you this evening. Join us again tomorrow for the very latest news at the very same time. Tune into our social media pages until then to stay updated on the latest news. A pleasant evening and good night. For news and information you can trust 24 hours a day, visit adhaderna.lk.